Hi, Dr. Dave here again. The last video that I made about Frank Morris's timeline brought back some more memories to me. One of them about a time that I held a gun on him when he tried to kill me at work. Now, I was working at a dairy inn, as I told you in that previous video. It's you can look at this link. And these guys were showing up, as I told you in that previous video, and the Anglin brothers would be stationed. I remember John Anglin was out there to the right, and Clarence was out there to the left. Out halfway between the corner of the building and the road, and they would just stand there and stare. Real psychopathic. And the, the lady that worked with me said, told me, David, those guys have murder in their eyes, and they're watching you. And, you know, I kind of didn't pay much attention to it, but what had happened is, Frank, I was in Mexico City just a couple of weeks before that, and Frank had tried to corner me several times down there, and I kept getting away. And I guess he got so psycho-obsessed about the whole thing that he actually followed me back to Tampa. And these guys were going back to see their family in, in Ruskin anyway, which is 20 miles south of Tampa, throughout the entire 50 years or whatever. But anyway, uh, no, I called the police. Uh, actually, I talked to a, a couple of police officer friends of mine, and they were going to work with me to try and catch these guys and I remember I recall that uh, the officer who I usually spoke to couldn't come that night and he sent another officer he got there you know right when I got to work or or he had told me to come a little bit early and he got me into the squad car with him and he told me to told me to bring a gun that night and I did and he told me to show him the gun. It was a 32 automatic Colt, which, by the way, Frank committed some murders with a 32 Colt. Now, I've told you about those guys stealing a 22 revolver, Colt revolver from my dad. That was back in the 50s. But in the 70s or 80s somewhere in there, someone broke into our house and stole that 32 Colt from my dad. And they didn't touch anything else in the, in the house just took the gun and went back out the window. That really reeks of those guys, but I got to find out when they're, the, they were using this 32 cold. It, it may have been my dad's. Anyway, uh, I showed the officer the gun and he, you know, I broke it down and put it back together and everything. And he goes, wow, you really look like you know what you're doing with that gun. And I go, yeah, my dad taught me all about it. And he goes, do you know how to shoot it? And I go, yeah. I could, he said, are you good with it? And I said, yeah, I can put a, a one-inch pattern on a target 50 yards away. And he goes, 50 yards with that? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, do you know where the heart is at? And I went like that. And he goes, if you have to shoot, that's what you're going to do is shoot for the heart. And I go, okay. And he goes, you think you can handle this? And I go, yeah, I can handle it. But, you know, I think it's really weird. I wish I knew who I was shooting at. And he goes, I wish... We knew who you were shooting at, but I, if it's who we think it is, you need to shoot him. And uh, the long and the short of it, it was getting late in the evening. It was dark outside, and I think these guys had been there and then kind of disappeared behind the building. But the lady that was working with me kept watching them, and she said she was watching them through the uh, kind of louvered glass pieces on the door. And she was opening it a little and closing it. And she said, David, they're, they're back there by that telephone pole. And one guy's getting on the other guy's shoulders. And she kept looking. She goes, they're going up the pole. And I go, I better call the police. And she goes, they just cut the wires. I mean, this is right out of a murder movie, movie a murder mystery. And that's what she told me. She said, you need to wake up here. You know, this, they're going to kill us. And I uh, told her, I said, don't worry about it. I already talked with the police about what I'm supposed to do. And 
I told her call the police, and she picked up the phone to call, and she said the phone's dead. They cut the wires, and I didn't. Even, you know, she was really scared. She was starting to freak out, and I told her stay calm. Listen, I gotta stay calm. You gotta stay calm. The cops already told me what to do, and she said, "Well, what are you gonna do?" And I go, "Let me think about it." And I went and looked outside, and through the you know the through the door, and and I saw John Anglin out there kind of working around this pole. There was a pole there and a, a concrete wall that came up to the pole like that. And these guys were walking in between the two and going around behind that concrete uh, wall that was back there behind that daring in. And when I saw him, I just got really mad and I threw the door open and I stood there and I pointed the gun out the door, out the hallway. There was kind of a hallway and it looked like this. It was kind of a hallway like this, if you can imagine, down there at the end where it's getting dark, there was a door there. And I went down there, and I threw the door open, and I stepped back, and I stood there, and I pointed the gun at him. Now, it was that 32 Colt revolver of my dad's. I really liked that gun because it fit my hand really, really well. I could shoot really good with it, and you know, I, you know, I had several shots in there. But I do recall the police officer telling me, you only have one clip, and I go, yeah, and he goes, that's not good. And I said, why? And he said, you don't know how many guys you're up against. And I said, well, that's what it's going to have to be. Now, this is a revolver, okay? It's not a, it's not a, uh, an automatic weapon like the one that I had, but I was standing there like this, pointing the gun out the door at these guys. I remember I had my hand on my hip, and I had the gun pointing at him like that, and I had the sights on him, and I yelled out to him, what are you doing? And when John turned and saw me with a gun, he ran behind that post. And then all of, and I put the gun down, and all of a sudden Frank stepped out. Now Frank had already choreographed this. He knew, he knew the lighting, the lighting in that area. He knew that I wouldn't be able to make out his features, and he was just gambling that I wouldn't remember his voice. You know, I can't believe that I didn't figure it out and shoot him on the spot because, I, you know, I knew who he was. I just don't think I wanted to accept it. And I had shut out so many things. I can't believe I shut it out in two or three weeks after seeing him, but I guess I did. But anyhow, he stepped out. Frank stepped out into the light. He looked just like that picture that you see of the Zodiac Killer, the drawing, police drawing, underneath the lamp. I'm going to show that to you right here. Except that he didn't, he wasn't wearing a mask. Uh, I know if he would have worn a mask, I mean I think he knew that if he wore the mask I would know who he was and I would shoot him dead on the spot. He may have had the mask back there. But anyway, I'm standing there with the gun on him, and he says, You got a gun, huh? And I go, Yeah, I got a gun just for you. And he goes, Yeah, but can you use it? And I remember the police officer telling me that if you shoot this guy dead, nothing's going to happen to you if it's who we think it is. But if it's not, you may have some problems to deal with. But then he said, On the other hand, if he shows you a weapon... And that's a different story. So I was kind of waiting for him to show a weapon, and I figured one of his assistants may come running in the door on me, but, you know, I had enough bullets to take care of a few of them. So when he said that, I just, just to see if I could get him to draw a weapon, I put the gun down like that. I thought, well, if he's got a gun, he'll pull it out, you know, and I can get him while he's doing that. And, he, and then he said, hey, you can't do it, can you? And I go, no, it's not you. It's what the police told me. And I started, I was running that through my mind about, you know, if you see a weapon and et cetera, et cetera. But I wasn't going to tell him that. And he goes, what did the police tell you? So I just brought the gun back up and I started yelled as loud as I could and crazy as I could. They told me to kill you but I used a few explicatives and some other things and scared him so bad that he ran in between that post and the, the uh, concrete wall back there. And 
I closed the door. Now the lady I was working for was going crazy. At the time, she kept saying, give me the gun, I'll shoot him. They're trying to kill us. You know, I didn't get it. But anyway, um, I told her, I said, we got to get a hold of the police somehow. And she, uh, and, and I'd already made an agreement with them that they would be there around closing time. And if they would have came when we had agreed on, they'd have got there when the Zodiac was there. Now, they got there a little bit late. They weren't, they were just a guy, the same same officer that had briefed me was just passing by. And he, he told me later that he just passed by because he hadn't heard anything from me. And I told him they cut the phone lines. But he goes, man, that's typical Zodiac killer stuff. He was passing by, and I stuck my head out the window, and I yelled to him, Hey, come here, come here! And he came over. Now, the next time I saw Frank in Mexico, he told me, You must have some friends on the police department, because they never show up that fast. He thought I got the call through to them, but I didn't. They were just already tracing around there, and they had some guys in the back. He said they sent some officers back there in the back to try and find these guys, but elusive Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, they pretty much got out of there. But he came that close to getting about three bullets right in his heart. Because he was only about 50 yards out there, counting the distance from where I was at and out across the the parking lot. And I knew I could put those bullets in his eye if I wanted to. But he got away. But that's just another time that Frank had a close close call with me. Usually it was me having the close calls, and that time it was him. There was another time, I'm waiting to remember all the details on it, and I'll make you a video about that. Again, I hope this helps you to understand the big picture about this guy, you know, and I want to let everybody know that my heart goes out to these people in Orlando who where that shooting, terroristic shooting just happened, and I wanted to tell you something that uh, it, I... I wrote it in my book, but I haven't told you yet, I don't think, but one of the last things Frank told me was, what are you going to do when there's a whole lot of people like me out there? And I go, well, what are you talking about? And he said, they're making them every day. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well, it's just like I told you. You're a pro I'm a product of the way I was brought up. He's talking about his child abuse. And he says, you're just like you're a product of the way you were brought up. And he said, well, all, all, everything I told you about how I was brought up, that's why I'm the way I am. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah. And he said, the, re that's the, the reason you're the way you are is because of the way you were brought up. And then he said something really interesting that stuck in my mind and has all and just another piece to the puzzle that makes all this make sense to me. He said, you're a product of what we made you, what we did to you. And I didn't know what he meant, but... Now I do. He was talking about all the times he tried to kill me. I w grew up to be a fighter. I, and he even said that. You grew up to be a fighter. And you grew up to be a pretty good one. He goes, you're good at getting away. He goes, you learned all of those things for a reason. Well, you know, I don't think it's really a good thing. But, yeah, I, you know, I mean, I'm here to tell the story. I guess that's a good thing. America needs to know. But America needs to know. There's Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers, the Zodiac killers. They're making them every day, and they're all over the place. They, because Frank was, they were terrorists. These guys terrorized people. Frank once walked up behind a police officer who was writing a ticket, and shot the guy in the back and killed him for no reason, just because he 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 didn't like it because the guy was writing a ticket. So have a nice day, folks, and we'll see what I remember next. Thank you for watching. Appreciate thumbs up. It would really help. And uh, I hope you like my videos.